Greetings. Today I'm going to attempt to repair this Samsung LCD TV. It's a model LE32R74BD. Now, as you can see, it's not coming on, and in fact, if we just take a look at the LED down the bottom, it's just blinking on and off like that. And the remote does nothing, it just does not want to switch on. Here's a view around the back. You can see there are several circuit boards in here. I've taken the covers off for clarity here. And we've got the main circuit board here. There's a decoder board here for a smart card. This is the main power supply board and the inverter board is over here. Now what we're interested in today is this power board. And what can often happen with these is apparently these can dry out, these capacitors can dry out and you'll get that sort of problem according to standby but the capacitors have been replaced on here and it made no difference so there's another thing to try and that is to replace this chip under here with a replacement that costs less than £10 on eBay now obviously safety first with these things you can see there's a marked out section on this board. Everything down that side when the mains is on is live. Everything up there is safe. And when the power is off, you still got to wait for this to discharge itself. So be very careful with these things, especially when they're faulty. I've known capacitors to hold charge for a long time afterwards when there's something wrong with the power supply. This one does seem to discharge itself fairly quickly, but I said, be careful with them because they will bite. That will charge up to over 300 volts when it's, when it's running. So you want to make sure. I've already metered this out between the chassis and these heat sinks and various, test, various points on the board. And it all seems to be safe now. You'll give it time to discharge when you're actually taking the, the, the back case off the, off the machine, of course it'll have time to run itself down then, but obviously if, you, if you're if you testing it then you pull the lead back out, or obviously don't forget to unplug the lead then if you plug it in, you unplug it, it'll hold the charge for a little while so don't just go diving straight into the power supply, give it time to discharge here's a close-up of the chip with this cover removed it is bonded onto the heatsink with a little bit of heatsink compound so you will want to get some of that as well and the part number is an it's an F nine treble two L, and like I said, you can pick these up quite cheaply on eBay. And here it is on the bottom of the board. You can see the zigzag pattern of pins. It's a zigzag inline package with some pins removed, and as you can see, it's very much within the high voltage side of the board. So let's get this out. Here we go, that's all the connections desoldered. Obviously make sure you don't leave any bits of solder left over the board from where you've been using the solder sucker. Also you may find that some of these are a little bit tough to desolder. All you've got to do there with those is add a bit more solder and then suck the, the old and the new solder up and it comes up quite nicely. The holes on the board are quite big and as seems to be common with a lot of um, power supply boards, it's single sided so you haven't got to worry about any through hole plating so get up. it is quite an easy chip to desolder and then you can reach around the back with the heatsink and wiggle the chip free and here's a closer look at the chip itself, see if I can get the, get the camera to focus there we go and so you'll, you'll see pictures of these chips on eBay you think ah, they've butchered it, they've snapped half the legs off and you can see that actually not all of the legs on this package are used there's quite a few which straight from the factory don't have any legs on them so one out and one new chip to go in I can tell which one the new one is because it hasn't got any solder on the legs otherwise I wouldn't have these both in my hand, you can guarantee I'd mix them up. I just need to apply a little bit of 
thermal compound on the back. I'm using a CASA 455 just because I happen to have some lying about and there wasn't much on the old one so it's not put much on the new one either. As you can see there wasn't an awful lot on the back of that so this should spread out quite nicely. In fact I can use the old chip to spread it across the new chip. There we go. That's the new chip in place. I won't bond it in yet because I want to solder the, the connections in before uh, before bolting it in and letting the heat sink take away all the heat. But the connections do seem to sort of go straight back down through the holes. You're not going to bend the pins or anything. It just seems to drop straight in. So it's quite an easy chip to fit. There we go, and quick inspection, make sure we have got no short circuits between any of the, any of the connections. And also make sure there's no stray bits of metal from the desolder operation, that looks good. So, let me put the bracket on and give it a go. It is a little bit of a fiddle to line up, but it will go. Oh, in case anyone's wondering, electri uh, electrical screwdriver, there's no guts in this one. It's a dead, uh, dead screwdriver because it was crap. It was one of those electronic ones with the batteries in there supposed to do continuity testing and whatnot and basically what it would ha would happen is you you touch the end and it would light and if you touch something live it would light if you touch something metal it would light if you touch a finger it would light so you couldn't actually use it for anything because it would just show yes I'm touching something it was absolute crap anyway that's in place, let's power it up. Well, before I put the finishing touches to it, I forgot the one thing I missed missed out. This is the part number of this particular circuit board. Uh, there are others which use the same drive IC and will have the same issues and the same means of fixing them. It's a BN96-03775A. Although some of these particular models do seem to have different power supply boards. Board is connected. Question is, will it work? Well, I wouldn't be showing this on YouTube if it didn't work, would I? Let's plug that in. And once again, the LED is flashing. But this time, the TV has started up. One IC, job done. Telly fix, less than 10 quid. Hope somebody finds this useful. Thank you very much for watching.